Hey everyone, CubDev here, and in today's episode we're going to be adding a blood screen and maybe a camera shake if we have time. Uh, so first things first, let's go ahead and import the blood texture which I have provided in the description. Just click on the link, I'm going to go into blueprints and make a new folder for this. And import. And we're going to need to make a material for this uh, so we can make it kind of fade in and fade out. Uh, at a vignette kind of style. The so right click, new material. I'm gonna call it blood screen. Open this up. We need to set the material to user interface and set the blend mode to translucent. Then we can add our texture. I'm gonna hold down T and click and it'll automatically create a texture. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select the blood screen. RGB will go into final color and the opacity is going to be this alpha uh, multiplied by our radial gradient. So let's go ahead and add a multiply and get a radial gradient exponential. So for the UVs, let's just go ahead and get the texture coordinate. And we want to make sure the center position is right in the center of our screen. So let's get a vector 2 by holding down 2 and clicking and setting the RNG to 0.5. For the radius, I'm just going to get a constant and set it to 1. And for the density, I'm going to make a parameter and also make it 1. So if you hold on S and click, it'll create a constant, but it'll make it a parameter. And call it density. Default value 1. And we do want to invert the density because uh, the gradient's going the wrong direction. So go ahead and get a static bool and set it to true and plug that into invert density. Now if we 1 minus this and plug it into our multiply, we should get the effect we want. And you can see if we change the density value, so something like 0.5, oops, uh, it gets uh, thinner starting in the middle and going outwards and then 0 will be completely gone. We can also go above 1 if we want it to be a, a harsher, so if we do like 3, we get that. I'm going to make the values uh, by default zero. All right, so let's go in the main HUD and add this. So let's go ahead and add an image. And we're going to make it fill the whole screen. So I'm going to anchor it to full and set all the offsets to zero. And the image will be the material we made. Actually, sorry, we need an instance of the material. So let's browse to the material, right click, get material instance, and that's actually the one we want. So go ahead and drag that in. It looks like nothing for now, and that's because the density is set to zero. We need to update this in real time. So let's go to the graph. And originally I did this on the on hit, and whenever we hit it updates, but since we're also gonna be able to heal and stuff, we probably just want it updating all the time. So this time around, I'm actually gonna put it in the tick. Let's go ahead and get our blood screen image, which I'm going to rename. And bring it out, and we're going to get its dynamic material. With this, we'll, we can change scalar values at runtime. So we're going to set scalar parameter. And the one we're changing is density. We have to make sure these are spelled the exact same. And the value is going to be based off player self. We need a reference to the player. So on the construct, let's just cast to it. Get player character for object. And just make it a variable. Now we can get it. And we can get the health component that's attached to him. And then we can get the current health and the max health. And let's just divide these by each other. And this will give us a value between 0 and 1 for our character's health. Now, we don't want to just plug this into the value because that'll be inverted. Uh, when we have full health, we would have the bloodiest screen and vice versa. Um, so instead of 
just inverting it directly, we're actually going to get a map range clamp. And this can map different numbers to each other. So let's plug this into the value. Now the in ranges are our health. So we know this is going to be between 0 and 1. So we'll make in range A 0 and in range B 1. So B is full health, A is no health. And then we can map those numbers to separate numbers. So for full health, I want the density to be 0. So it's completely gone. And if we're at zero health, I want the density to be, we could say one, uh, but I think something higher looks a little better. So let's try like three. Great. Now this should work out of the box because in the last episode, we made the zombie actually deal damage to us when he hits us. So yes, we tell him to take damage, take 10 damage. So every time we hit, it should take 10 hits to get to a full blood screen. So let's test this out. As we're getting hit, our screen is getting redder and redder and redder until we're at full density, which I think we are right there. We should be dead now, but we don't have that yet. Now, if you want to increase or decrease how intense this is, you can just change this outrange A. So if we did something like five, that will be our new uh, full red screen. And it'll be more intense than what the, uh, the three was. You can see it's a little darker, it's a little richer. Uh, ew, richer is a gross word for that. Uh, but that is working as intended. Uh, another thing to make this uh, really feel good is adding a small camera shake when we get hit. So let's go ahead and do that too. So back in the blueprints folder, I'm gonna make an another folder called camera shakes. And in it, I'm just going to create a blueprint class, search for camera shake. And the one we want is the matinee camera shake. Camera shake base doesn't work the way I want it to, so select that. I'm gonna call it CS on hit. Go ahead and open this up. So there's no nodes we need to make in the actual camera shake itself. Everything we need is in the details right here. So first we have this oscillation duration, blend in time, blend out time. I'm not gonna make this episode really based on how camera shakes exactly work, but I'll go over the basics. The duration is just how long the camera shake will last. So I'm thinking something small like 0.2. And the blend in time, blend out time are self-explanatory. It's uh, how long it takes to blend in and out. By shaking the camera, we can either change its rotation, its location, or its FOV. We're just gonna do rotation. And pitch is gonna be the main one because pitch is the camera kind of tilting forward or back like you're nodding your head. You kind of want your head to nod forward like you're flinching. So. For the amplitude, this is how intense the camera shake will be. Uh, I'm going to do a value like negative 65. Now I'm doing negative because by default this initial offset is set to random, which means it just kind of starts at a random value and adds 65 to it. But I'm going to change this to zero, which means it starts at zero and it'll add negative 65. That's how I know it'll be the exact same every way. And I'm doing negative because that's the camera tilting forward rather than tilting backwards. Now the frequency is uh, how often this happens in this oscillation duration. And I only want him to go forward once and come back once. So I will set this to one. I typed two when I said that, but one. Now let's go ahead and plug this into when we get hit. So open the first person characters take damage function. We're in the first person character. We remove the help. We do the main HUD on hit. And now we want to play a camera shake. So we can either play a world camera shake, which means it originates in the world. And if we're at that position or any cameras in that position will shake. Uh, but I just want it to be local to our character. So to do that, we need to get our player controller. And then we'll do client start camera shake. Now this makes sure it's only our camera that is shaking. The shake I'm selecting is the one we just made on hit. And we can change the scale if you want it more or less intense. So let's go ahead and test this out. So when we get hit, our camera nods forward like that, kind of like we're flinching. Uh, we can add a little extra to it if we want to shake on the other two axes. With these, I like to just keep them at random so it's just so it's a bit randomized each time. We'll keep a lower amplitude at something like 10. But we can increase the frequency to maybe something like two. And I'm just going to do this on the roll as well. And then we'll just get a uh, just a bit of random rotation on the other two axes when we're hit. But the main is still our head 
leaning forward. And then we kind of got that, you know, jerk of a hit. And it makes it very clear that, uh, you know, something's attacking us. I think that really adds a lot to uh, what we're making here. All right, that'll be it for this episode. Make sure to check out the links in the description. Uh, also, while you're down there, like and subscribe. And here is your second reminder to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Darling, you